The Cube at IBM Impact 2014 is brought to you by headline sponsor IBM. Here are your hosts, John Furrier and Paul Gillen. Okay, welcome back everyone. We're live in Las Vegas for IBM Impact. This is SiliconANGLE's The Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined by my co-host Paul Gillen of SiliconANGLE. Our next guest is Bob Picciano, who's the SVP of Information Analytics at IBM. Uh, welcome to The Cube. Thank you very much, John. Um, you did that pretty fast. You practiced that a few times. <laughs> I memorize it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, well, we did, I mean, we did it at 6.30 yesterday. So we, we love going uh, wall to wall. We hear from the executives, from the customers. Good. Um, and we get the perspectives. Of course, we got the crowd chat out there for the, the crowdsource commentary, so we'll probably get some questions from the, from the, from the crowd. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, the, you know, we walk into IBM, it's like walking into Nordstrom's, right? You see, the, you see the racks, I want that suit, it looks good, it hangs together, it matches. You know, things are really looking great right now. Things are hanging together, cloud, mobile, uh, Damn. Existing story looks good. So I got to ask you the reality of can we get that? How do we get that, right? Oh, sure. So it's about big data and analytics, obviously, screaming hot topic, power systems. The Google was here yesterday. A lot of relevant stuff. So, so just share with the folks out there, summarize kind of the big picture of what's going on with the information group and the analytics in particular. Sure, sure. John. So thank you. I appreciate I, I really appreciate you having me here. So, first off, you know, the company transformation is like every other company's transformation. We see massive amounts of opportunity in data, cloud, and then building systems of engagement. And in the latter, it's engagement for our clients as well as for our employees. You know, every enterprise has to make sure that all of their employees are engaged in the strategy, engaged in delivering exceptional client outcomes. Um, and so I often say, you know, data is the what, cloud is the how, and systems of engagement are the why. Now, I've been in the data space for a long time. This is my 27th year in the information management space. I started as a co-op in the research organization, working on relational database systems. And, you know, 10 years ago- Was that DB2? It, it was <laughs> DB2, the courses to, to DB2. Um, you know, 10 years ago, if we were having this discussion, the data topic would be around kind of cost of data, data compute. How do I lower the cost of computing for all the information I need to manage? But now, data is all about top line growth. It's about identifying really critical business insights in data that companies have and that have collected for a long time, how to correlate that information with other sources of information that they have, cross application domains, cross lines of business domains, inside and outside the company, and how to be able to divine critical insights, both historically, but also directly in the business moment. I want to ask you about the data. Let's drill down on the data, because sure. back then, certainly innovations have come. You guys have been involved in that. Certainly on the database side, you've seen you know, innovations, new innovations come to the market. But the data was a, data was a known animal. You kind of knew what you were dealing with. And, yeah. and you know, there's been cubes, there's been uh, you know, structured databases, all that stuff's been happening, right? So, but now, it's so wild west on the data. It's high velocity, it's, it's diverse, there's data fusion issues, there's all yeah. kinds of yeah. kind of foreign data, <laughs> dirty data. So now with unstructured, you now yeah. have the, the connected web, the social business component, sure. driving a lot of new inbound data, where data is not just as known animals, more un, a lot of unknown data. What is Uncer your, uncertain data. Uncertain data, so what, yeah. are your, what are your customers telling you? What are the top things that they come to you for and saying, hey, here's my problem, and sure. help me solve it? Sure, well look, I mean, on, on the topic of the unstructured data, that's always been about 80% of the, of the information out there has been unstructured. It's been natural language, it's been documents, and things that aren't always necessarily tightly correlated to outcomes in business cases. So that's one thing that we focused on for many years in the enterprise content management space, is helping our clients to find ways to use content as a competitive business advantage in managing the process around that unstructured information, but now correlating it more tightly with structured information. Now in the, in the overall space, the amount of information being created each day is about two and a half exabytes. And this is still growing at you know, a geometric, if not exponential curve rate. So we're going to see lots of information continuing to pour in. And as people need to divine information, they need to use more and more sophisticated analytics. They need to automate the use of those analytics, meaning pushing them directly into the applications. Right, an application was just a codification of a business procedure or process. Now what we have to do is we have to push analytics into that procedure or business process so that you can use advanced predictive modeling 
to set what outcomes I might want as I see variations in the data pattern for an individual or for a market or for a product. So I want to be, be able to take advantage of analytics in the course of a business process. It's not just what's sitting on the glass in an analyst desktop. So That's also important though. So who's responsible for solving that problem? Is it well, IBM, is it SAP, is it? Is it it's, uh, well, yeah, I mean, look, SAP you know, has a very minimal view of that enterprise data. They have things that are related to the ERP systems uh, and they don't have you know, nearly any depth in the data warehousing and data mark space and our offerings are generally about 100 times better price performance than what they're touting in the marketplace with things like HANA. So I don't think they have the point of view in that space to really be a company's real um, evangelist and advocate to how to extract information across the entire data estate. But I think what you're pointing out is, you know, there are various enterprise suppliers that can give a good insight into that information, but then there's also roles that are emerging in an enterprise we serve about what to do with that data. And we're seeing the importance of new roles like chief data officers, right, chief analytic officers, that are helping organizations understand this cross-channel problem that have been created because organizations typically have grown up in application silos. And now I have to integrate that information, make semantic sense out of how common fields might be utilized different ways and they have rules for consumption. Mm -hmm. And how can I apply advanced analytics across those rules of consumption? So the process of integration, governance, really come into play. And then lastly, organizations have to be very concerned about data privacy and security. So if you're going to be aggregating big data and pulling together information from a lot of very sensitive client information, putting together a new customer composite, my goodness, I mean, that's radioactive if not handled <laughs> properly. And that can directly affect, adversely, brand equity if it's not managed uh, correctly. So applying data security and governance into that process is something we do Is that well. a product? I mean, is, will there be forthcoming products in that area, or is it something you're, you're, you're using, your, your, your existing line, DB2 line, Formix line, and such, to solve no, that? No, we've, we've uh, taken those capabilities and we have appropriately evolved them to serve the needs of the broader estate of capabilities that are necessary to manage big data. So, you know, typically the analytic system of record was the data warehouse. But now we're introducing capabilities on Hadoop and MapReduce that augment the utility of that data warehouse to wrap its arms around unstructured information. We're seeing real-time analytic zones like Infosphere Streams come into play. We're seeing new special purpose data marts around things like uh, our blue acceleration in-memory columnar uh, database come into play. The data privacy and governance has to incor incorporate all of that, including the operational data stores. So we've introduced, in product form, capabilities like the data privacy suite for Hadoop. And here at the conference, we introduced new capabilities in the form of data services that supply data masking and data privacy that are integrated directly into the Blue Mix environment so that information-centric developers can ensure that information they manage that's highly sensitive can be managed with the right kind of security. You know, we cover a lot of startups, and you know, I live in Silicon Valley, and, and the Wikibon team in Paul's in Boston area, so you kind of have a balance of yeah. a little Kool-Aid injection on one hand. And, Some uh, great innovation yeah. going on <laughs> yeah. there. Great innovation. Uh, but you know, when you look up the startups, they differ from like the scale that IBM has to deal with. I mean, we were talking yesterday about the surveillance data coming off cameras mm -hmm. and then being integrated in real time right. into other databases. It's just massive scale complexity. Right. Um, so I want to drill down on the comment you said, what is the data, how is the cloud, why is the engagement? Someone on, on our crowd chat just chimed in and said, aren't uh -huh. business outcomes the why? Which I can, you know, I want you to just address that. Sure. I can see how you can separate them it's out. A, it's a good point. Um, and then you said 80% of the unstructured data not, is not always tied to the outcomes in some cases. Uh, and then you said data is pushed into the application. So those are really awesome trends. So okay. how does a customer, one, tie the data to the outcomes? Sure. And two, how do they tie the data into the application? Is it blue mix? Is it, is it, is it too complicated to, to talk on the cube? Or you just asked me about seven questions, <laughs> yeah, so I'll try to remember. I mean, it, but let me start with the, the person uh, who took the time to it's ask buffet. the buffet, take your choice, outcomes. you know. <laughs> it's always about business outcomes. So you're rightfully pointing out that it really is about the business outcome. But the system of engagement in many ways is what your clients are expecting uh, and it's that bond of trust and intimacy that they're creating with your app, uh, with your set of applications or websites and it's how they're interacting with your brand. So the, the, um, the, the what is that, how are you capitalizing on the fact that that client is sharing more information uh, and is interacting with your brand more frequently than ever before. Um, and then the business outcome for both the client is having that loyalty rewarded 
with an aspect of something special you've done for them, understanding more about that person, and the business outcome for the company is being able to capitalize on that business moment and having maybe an enriched commercial uh, relationship with that client or serving their household or family or community in a better way. So the outcome is the scoreboard. It's a scoreboard, really. It's the yeah. result. Yeah. I mean, the outcome could be, I mean, Tim, I know Tim asked the question. I would say the outcome is the result. I don't want to speak for IBM, but that's my view. It's like, so, so that's kind of like the scoreboard, right? Sure. Customers lost and won, sales up or down, cost, yep. so and so. And was the client's need served, right? For their company, it's about the client outcome as well. So talk about the history of, you know, you mentioned you've been with IBM for many years, you've seen the evolution. Talk about now the application market. IBM's always been in the application business. We were joking yesterday, MIS departments, DSS, decision support, data sure. processing is buzzwords that are, that are now coming vogue again, but the apps now are modern, we've got Bluemix. How do you push the data into the application? Talk about the kinds of complexities that have changed from the old days to new. Is sure. it more complex now, less complex? Well, you know, it's, it's an interesting paradox because the amount of data that you need to understand is more complex. But there's new tools and capabilities. The economies of computing power, the economies of storage, and the economies of bandwidth are allowing us to approach these problems in new and innovative ways so that we can mask the complexity. So people use terms like in-memory and columnar databases and they say, wow, it's, you know, it's a three times of order of magnitude faster than correlational systems. But let me tell you the real power of this. You don't have to go through all the specialized modeling. You don't have to really write finely tuned SQL. Right? You can just sort of pour the data into these systems and be able to get blazingly fast performance out of poorly written SQL. So in addition to making them faster, we've made them more simple. The NoSQL movement, not only SQL movement, is also about that. It's about, I don't have to really c contemplate what, st what, uh, what model I'm going to create that's going to optimize the interaction between the application and the data. I'm going to apply the schema on when I read the data as opposed to when I write the data. Because the older systems... You're not restricted with that, with schema, that's with, right. you're not worrying about the schema, you've got to park the data somewhere. Right, so it makes it simpler. Yeah. So for the application developers, things like JSON and putting delimited tags inside of JSON objects makes it much more simple. But then the, the problem has become more complex as the application domain data that you want to include as broadening. So that's where capabilities like semantically integrating the data, understanding the value of a business glossary, they have to come into play because you don't want to use the wrong data. You used the term uncertain data earlier. It's very voracious. And as more and more data comes online, companies have to be concerned about, am I getting the proper signal out of all of this data? You, you just talked about NoSQL. You just completed the acquisition of Cloud. And, yes, uh, fantastic. How, what, what is the roadmap for Cloud and how will that dovetail with, with what you're doing with your, your other database lines? Well, like I said, when we look at what you need to do in order to really properly serve a client's needs in this era of data being the next natural resource, there are multiple zones of capability that are required, both operationally and analytically. And one of the most important zones is this really important confluence between highly flexible, collaborative data systems like Cloudant offers and being able to handle huge scales of that information and being able to scale the system in terms of what it can handle almost overnight based on you know, a flash success of a set of capabilities that they're enabling. So Cloudant's roadmap has always been focused on that and one of the core things they do is to help organizations understand how they use that organization of data and information for their competitive advantage. So you're not just getting a database or a back-end data service, you're getting data modeling experts, you're getting data scientists that reside inside of the cloud and system um, to be able to help that company build the best available product and then be able to switch on scalability as that company's product succeeds. Can so the roadmap is spot on. Can you give us an example of a use case scenario for Cloudin, the perfect, perfect uh, application of Cloudin? Well, I mean, you heard from uh, Corey, the Corio, uh, uh, Coriel Life Coriel Sciences, Life yeah. Sciences mm -hmm. uh, today talking about uh, genomic analysis. data yeah. and the fact that, you know, <laughs> That has scaled down from you know, what was a billion dollars to manage down to a thousand dollars to sequence a gene, and it's creating you know, petabytes and zettabytes of information that need to be, that need to be effectively managed. Um, you know, Samsung's music service, Milk, is another good example. Right? That runs with a cloud and set of backends. And so as they introduce that set of services to their, to their client base, 
they went kind of surprise viral almost overnight with the success of that music service that competes with iTunes and iTunes Radio. Um, and uh, and they, they back end all that customer object information in a cloud with database. So just a couple of really important trends. You know, Hothead Games is another one that sees you know, massive spikes in, in uh, customer usage and cloud just continues to scale with that, scale in the new data usage patterns. So those guys really did a great job and it was my pleasure to welcome them to the, to the IBM team. I see SoftLayer is, um, you know, had Steve Mills on yesterday promoting that, uh, more links than Amazon, which is great. We'd love to get that implied uh, competitive fire going, but I want you to take a perspective now and share with the audience out there the, uh, your perspective over the years and to the startups really, because yeah. you're seeing a lot of the blue mix trying to court the developers and bring value of there. Course. Talk about the, what's needed in the enterprise that's different. The consumer apps, certainly, we've seen you know, the home runs, the WhatsApp, and all this great stuff going on. Square was here on stage. Yep. So you know, the consumer's got everyone's attention, but as that shifts now to the enterprise, you've seen that consumerization shift. So it's not always clear what it takes to win in the enterprise. Well, so you know, the enterprise we'll, has- Talk to those developers. Sure, thank you. So the enterprise has a great set of advantages because they have a lot of very, very important critical data assets that they can manage in new ways to understand their clients better, understand their products better, and then use that same innovation that you hear about every day with the startups and put that to work for the companies that they're serving in new applications that are engaging and that are information rich. The other thing that I think is one of the most important elements, and I think we'll see the space of big data move very rapidly to fast data. And what I mean by fast data is really seizing that business moment. What can I do in the application of highly advanced predictive analytics in the context of the business transaction so that you understand at that very moment how to best serve that client, how to take advantage of an opportunity, or how to avoid a threat or a risk. And so that application of all of those data assets, not as a historical record for the enterprise, but as in the in-flight of business transactions. How about the governance side? That's pretty complex too, right? Yep, I mean, is. managing the data audits and things well, of that look, nature. Well, we're making that very simple for clients and for enterprises with what we've done in the information integration and governance suite and what we've done with the privacy suite for Hadoop. So I think companies can learn in terms of what we can help them implement as, as best practices and the fact that we do this on heterogeneous data. So we'll do the data privacy, security, data masking, data obfuscation, not just on IBM's data, but we'll do it on top of Oracle. We'll do it on top of Microsoft. We do it on other people's database. So it's one solution you can use across your entire enterprise. Uh, we're seeing this emergence of the chief data officer concept and a growing number of enterprises creating yep. that, that role. Do you see this as a long-term play? Will we have chief data officers 10 years from now or is this a sort of a flash in the pan that will be absorbed in the I last? don't think it's a flash in the pan. I think it's something that we're going to continue to see ramp up. Uh, you know, some of the analysts project that by the year 2016 we'll see 50% of the Fortune 500 having uh, chief data officers. Uh, you look at in the fields of financial services and insurance, in highly regulated and governed uh, organizations, that really is a very critical role because it's not just about you know, how to properly govern the data, it's how to properly govern the usage of that data for the outcome that you're trying to derive. It, will, will IBM uh, take any active role in, in encouraging this, this position, encouraging your customers to proliferate this position? Well, we're taking an active role in making sure that chief data officers really have an agenda and a roadmap of things that they need to understand in order to perform their duties to the expectations of the shareholders and customers they serve. So we've built best practices and we've taken our assets and actually shared them openly in a MOOC-like environment, very similar you know, to what's happening in spaces like Wikibon, really democratizing yeah. this notion of how to incorporate a larger community uh, in understanding all the implications of what's happening in the marketplace. So the Big Data University has a great set of assets for chief data officers to begin to understand what the responsibilities are, what tools are available, what are the trials and tribulations of others that have gone before them, and utilize patterns of applications of these tools to help perform uh, the, this new role. You brought up the Wikibon thing, which is you know, essentially open, open um, community base. What you, what's your take on the whole crowdsourcing movement? Obviously in retail, looking, people looking at, you guys talk about social business, big part of IBM strategy. Yeah. Crowdsourcing data is interesting now. It is. The users Very are now so. connected to the internet, so you can yep. instrument your business 100%. Yeah, I, I think you know this notion also of the, um, the, the refining of that information. So I think crowdsourcing information, crowdsourcing data is going to continue to be a big movement. And I see open data initiatives happening everywhere. Uh, you know, we worked with an organization, Datakind, at uh, IOD last year. Uh, so a shout out to Jake Porway and the guys at Datakind. They've done a f tremendous job of embracing open data initiatives and helping organizations that don't necessarily have the means and sophistication 
uh, on their own staff to take advantage of all this crowdsourcing and all the available data to solve the problems um, that they're struggling with. So we see this crowdsourcing continuing, but we also see uh, this important aspect of helping people refine that data and make the proper correlations without making low quality correlations and deriving wrong outcomes. So I use the analogy, if this was the petrochemical space I was going to say today, oil. right? Yeah. You know, if I had a gallon of crude oil, <laughs> exactly. you know, I'd have to build my own refinery in order to get a quart yeah. of gasoline out of that. And you get leverage too, the big, and then with the internet scale, as Steve's pointing out, you can get the refinery up and the scale yes. is really amazing. It's, you know, it's not, your costs don't go up right. as much as the value. Right, so it's a place where smaller companies and smaller organizations, maybe you know, teams inside of bigger organizations, can come, you know, IBM will have a set of services there, we'll handle the data appropriately in terms of privacy and security, but it'll also be a, a point of collaboration for some of these things to happen so that people can identify, well, if I'm using this data to solve this problem, what other information is necessary? And you saw me pull back the curtain a little bit on innovations like Catalyst Insight yeah. to talk about what we understand about data and how to put that to work to, for novice analysts so that we can help them seek out and identify other information sources, other patterns of data that'll help them make better quality decisions more rapidly. A lot of smaller businesses believe they can't play in the big data realm, but, but Open Data Initiative is, is really an example of how they can take Absolutely. advantage of openly available data. So what, what, uh, who are the primary, uh, uh, what's the primary coalition or, or the uh, con constituency for open data? Is it, is it government agencies primarily, public data sources? It's, uh, look, I think it's really anybody who wants to get involved from a community basis. So I, mean, I applaud the cities that have taken the initiative to open up some of the interfaces, we've done some work with Pittsburgh, we did some work with Honolulu, all right, so cities that are being very progressive about understanding that much like these systems of engagement that we talked about for commercial enterprises, well, every community is a system of engagement. So if you're going to be a good governor or a good mayor or a good city councilman, you want to understand how you're engaging your citizens and helping improve the community and helping improve the community services. That's so these open data. I love that line. Every community is a system of engagement. So how do companies get their communities engaged? What is, what is your roadmap for them? What would you share to the guy there scratching his head, whether it's a CIO for IT, social business manager looking at crowd communities uh, or developer communities? How do they how do they get those communities engaged? How do they wire them together? How do they get started? Well look, a company like IBM has over 15,000 uh, analytics consultants that are ready to go to work for the clients that, uh, that would like our help. We've done uh, nearly 40,000 business analytics engagements. We've identified common patterns uh, that relate to business outcome problems that our clients are looking to serve. And we've done that cross industry and we've done that on a whole variety of different data. We've also opened that up to a variety of business partner relationships to cooperate in that environment space. So I say, bring us your tough problems <laughs> and we'll collaborate on okay, delivering Okay, we, we got to get outcomes. cut to the next program, but I want to give you the final word here. Uh, great, great segment. Thanks for taking the time sharing your perspective. We love it. Um, tell the folks out there uh, why this point in time in history is so important. You know, all these things, are, the confluence of trends are coming together. You know, why is the, everyone seem to be on red alert, ready alert to go do all this great <laughs> right. rebuilding and growing? Well, look, I mean, I think it's quite clear. It is everywhere you, you look, data, cloud, and engagement. Data being the next natural resource on really helping companies define how to enrich those systems of engagement or identify whole new business models and top line growth. So, like I said, I've been at this for 27 years. This is the most exciting time, and IBM is the most exciting company to partner with in order to help solve these problems. Bob Picciano, Senior Vice President at IBM, right in the heart of all the action. <laughs> He's in the war zone, if you want to call <laughs> use the war analogy, or the, or the land of opportunity, and certainly fruit is coming off the tree, big time with value and outcomes. This is theCUBE. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. Thanks, guys.